So another found new car and today I have a co-pilot. She's getting her shots because she uh, will go to a hunt in Belgium. And she needs some additional shots for that. Especially rabies next to the normal shots. Next to the normal shots they need to get at the uh, age of 12 weeks. Today she is 12 weeks. So we've gone for a drive, <laughs> sitting on my lap. But uh, I have secured her with uh, additional lines, of course. And uh, everything is safe. Driving the Suzuki Swift Sport, Setsi 23S. And, uh, you just heard the cold start, and now it's, uh, it's about 2 degrees minus, but the sun is getting through. As you saw, I'm getting the sunglasses out, perhaps it's uh, even better. Yes. It's nice to have a dog in, uh, in the car, because these dogs are small enough and they really uh, like to stay with you all the time. And they also have the benefit that they uh, yeah, are just not dogs that are hard to take uh, care of. You just give them good quality uh, exercise, good quality food. They are sturdy little buggers and they just love everything what you do. <laughs> as long as they can uh, be with you, they are very happy. That's a nice thing, of course. Uh, she's resting her uh, head on my arm. With a little bit of support, but I have to downshift a little bit here for this roundabout. Waiting for the caddy to cross. beautiful view of the sky <laughs> and then it switched to the other view in the regular view without uh, selfie mode so that's that and now at the traffic stop show you the little bugger pup again it's a female she's very uh, feisty also very good and uh, I really hope that she uh, yeah, will bring everything that that hunter wants from her. Yesterday her granddad uh, Butchjok died, so that's uh, a pity. But good that the blood is still uh, thick and uh, running through it. Uh, yeah, the pups that came from him, where he was a sire of. So that's a good thing that uh, the blood is still here. I also uh, hope that um, we will keep seeing this little sturdy dogs as they are, healthy, strong. The thing is you go to the, the veterinarian to give the best care to your dog of course, but you see that with harder types of dogs, more natural types of dogs, or dogs that are just bred for performance. They are so much healthier and normally you, you don't have to visit uh, the veterinary <laughs> that much, if, if at all. It's a little, of course a little bit different when you are hunting your dogs and uh, for example a badger had an, an uh, attack or a hawk attacked your dog. Of course those uh, rounds can be very uh, detrimental for the health if they are not properly taken care of of course. That's a different story altogether, but in general use you see so many owners of a lot of dogs, even uh, dogs that were once war dogs, such as Canacorzos or Mastiffs that are now having so much trouble just keeping uh, healthy with a regular walk out to the block, which is such a pity, such a downfall of those majestic uh, animals. Yes, uh, the Swift detecting that uh, someone was crossing the lane without uh, looking if I was coming through. But everything is fine. It's good that you have all these additional things to uh, help you prevent uh, accidents, of course. 
but also it's good to be uh, self-aware and try to to fix problems before they arise eh? hey Shelby her name is Shelby <laughs> and she's very nice she's also very people friendly of course if you have dogs it is good that you socialize them and also the pups so that they really like persons and uh, yeah they will that will also make it a lot easier for them to uh, to adjust to the new owners and just have a very nice time uh, it's uh, a lot of it in my opinion is nature uh, that you have uh, the genetics that you have the ancestry that was uh, good correct to start with but also there's a little bit of nurture in it of course because if you don't uh, nurture the dogs and give them the proper socialization and the proper care if needed then yeah of course their nature can be a little bit limited but I'm not saying that uh, nurture is the most important thing but if all things are equal and one pup is uh, properly socialized and properly taken care of and the other one is not also not dewormed and all this other stuff you will see an extremely big difference so we deworm the pups every two weeks and after eight weeks every month so she will be dewormed also again uh, today tomorrow and the day after we do it in three shots i think that's the best way to give not uh, an extremely high shot one time but also kill the eggs uh, because they are better protected against it and what the thing is uh, the pups don't have that acidity yet in their stomach as compared to the adult dogs and therefore the eggs of worms have an easier time and also the worms themselves so therefore they can get into places where in a normal healthy dog they uh, would have a, a far less chance and for example instead of only uh, being in the stomach or intestines they can also perhaps go to muscles such as the heart which you don't like hey hey look at it hey hey Eitje hmm? and therefore you can just protect them and if you uh, some people don't do this and they say okay they are properly fed but you see their stomachs are so uh, so full because they are full of worms, yeah? not properly taken care of or sold off as uh, seven or eight weeks type of dogs when they only are five. This is not a good start, of course. I'm not saying that a strong dog cannot deal with that. I think most of them can, but it's not the best start that you can give. Of course, it's easy for you, but not easy for the dog. Yeah? And if you do give them uh, a good start yes this is a good way to start a career as a hunting dog or as a dog for the family and also have a proper uh, socialization proper uh, start this is a good thing of course you cannot fix if you are breeding inferior dogs of course you cannot fix that by uh, your nurture but you can get the best out of an inferior dog by nurture and you can ruin a very good dog also by nurture so genetics play a big role but other factors are also of importance the other thing is a lot of people wanted this uh, this little pup but they thought they could, they would be, she would be fine with rabbits or cats and that's the thing I just don't like and then they say yeah we watch Caesar Milan and we can just ksh, ksh. yeah as if you can ksh, ksh. <laughs> so many generations of purpose breeding uh, for predator control and rodent uh, extermination I'm not saying that it is impossible but there are uh, many many accounts where it also went wrong and I don't want my dogs to be put in that risk because if it goes wrong and he kills uh, or he or she kills the cat or cats that's not a good thing, it's also not a family pet it's not good for the children that are in that family but they all think, yeah, I know uh, I know dogs, I watched Cesar Milan 
And if then the dog does not succumb to their efforts, because it has a lot more character than they have, then it is a psycho dog. But it just is purpose bred to be a hunter. And uh, for, to that dog, a cat or a fox is not that much of a difference. Huh? Of course it can be bred to, uh, how do you say this? It can be bred and raised to accept cats, but it can also have an, uh, an episode where it doesn't accept them anymore. For example, the cat attacks it, triggers it, and the, and the dog feels pain, and then, okay, nature kicks in, huh? Or the cat uh, tries to uh, run away, and then the dog thinks, okay, let's chase you and see who, who gets what. And these are little dogs, but they can jump very high. It can also uh, wring their little body in uh, small places. So, yeah, there's a big chance that they will get the cat. And if they don't get the cat, they will keep trying till they do. Hope you like this little video. Have a great day. And uh, uh, another one trying to just throw the cars in front of me. It's a little pity. Have a great day. I'm out. Bye bye.